it's Don, the Osh Professor here. Today I'm going to give you another bolo. Today we're going to talk about military patches exclusively. Now there's tons of other patches and I may go into those in other videos, but military patches like this one are something that I look for all the time. Now this is a World War II tank destroyer. This is a field made, meaning that it was made, you know, in field somewhere, made um, overseas probably in, in Europe um, from actually uh, a member of the actual battalion. Here's a World War I. Um, I think this is the first battalion, um, if I'm not mistaken. This is an original. It's felt. This is another one. This one was made in France, and I can pretty much determine that. Other ones to look for are like things like this. Now, this is a bullion one. That's actually bullion, metal bullion up on the top of the badge. These sell well, as well as even some of the cheaper ones like this we still get some good money for. Because, again, I don't pay a lot for this. This is a felt one, hand-embroidered and stitched on it. There's a ton of different badges, I mean, or patches to say. Um, but we're going to go to the screen, and we're going to show you just what these things sell for. Some of these go for monster prices. I've seen patches go for three and $4,000 a piece routinely. Not crazy prices, not inflated prices, but the real deal. We're going to cut over the screen, and we're going to show you some of those right now. Okay, so here we are. This is just one I picked. I picked a bunch of them. These are all military. Now, there's a ton of other patches that sell, but military specifically, I look for more than anything else. Stuff like this just sells horrendously well. So anyway, the best ones that I find are leather ones, U.S. Air Force from uh, World War II or before patches like that. Now, the Air Force itself wasn't an organization until after the war. It used to be called the U.S. Army Air Force. So, so you'll see U.S. AAF, things along that line. United States Army Air Force. That's what you'd see on some of these two. This is a leather one. The leather ones I always look for first. Any leather patch I pretty much buy. You can see the nice condition and nice quality. These were made to last, being leather. They were on pilot's jackets, which were made out of leather as well, too. And most of them are pilot uh, ones. There's some tank ones and things like that, too, that I do find occasionally. Shoulder patches. Uh, rank bars, shoulder strips, title strips, all that kind of stuff. Even on the cuffs, sometimes you'll find some patches that went too. So anyway, 670 for this one. Third Combat Cargo Squadron. In in the past, I've bought um, at Savers before all, all of our good thrift stores closed down. I was able to find um, flight jackets and things like that occasionally. Even newer ones, even from the 80s, 70s, 60s, 50s. Um, and sometimes the patches were worth like 10 times what the jacket were. So usually I took the patch off, sold that separately, and then sold the jacket on its own as well too. So, But they sell monstrously well. And the next one here, this is a felt one, another early one. This was field made, made in Australia, mind you. And again, USAAF, United States Army Air Force, unknown squadron. Um, they actually did a black light on these. Now, I see that occasionally. On these high dollar ones, sometimes they'll do black white light to show that it wasn't altered. You can usually see the difference on a black light when somebody's done something to it, cleaned it up, altered it, or anything else. So sometimes I do see black lights on that. So anyway, it's a nice patch. I don't know all the specifics on the patches. I know anything like this I buy if it's dirt cheap. Walt Disney actually did a ton of badges too, or patches. So if you're looking out and you see Disney characters on a patch, chances are it's a good patch. 690 on this one. Another leather patch. Now, I don't know, again, which specifics go to what. This is a Pursuit Squadron, Bataan Airfield. It's a rare one, no matter what. Some people will instantly know where these come from. There's collector's books. There's price guides that just show thousands of different patches in it. So there's varieties of each one. There's a lot to it. And there's also fakes out there. But once you can tell the real ones or you get them dirt cheap, it's worth the shot, I should say. Here's a fabulous one here. Um, it's actually embossed leather. Uh, it looks like it's actually been burned into the leather, the coloring, and the whole works. It's got the airman's name on it, Army Air Force. Uh, you can track it down. It's actually got the date on it and the whole works, and that's typical. Almost $700 for this one. Another leather one. Uh, troop Carrier, Make or Go. Um, just another grouping here, a leather one. U.S. Air Force, Army Air Force, of course, but 670 on this one. Uh, here's another one, 1960s, U.S. Naval Air Station, Jacksonville. Now, I've sold, the first patch I sold for a ton of money was from a, a German fighter squadron from the 60s. And it was a um, just some on-descript patch. I didn't know a thing about it. I was selling it for the jacket. And the guy asked me to cut it off the jacket. I didn't care about it. He bought the jacket, the whole works, but he only wanted the patch sent. He could care less about the other. It went for like $500. So after that, I always look for patches. 
this was years, years back. So anyway, patches sell, and it doesn't have to be World War I. That's usually what I see going for the most money, but some of these squadron ones go for some big money too, from odd areas, from bases that don't exist anymore, European bases. Mostly U.S. ones are all I mess with, but there are some foreign ones that I am able to get. Um, but anyway, $662 on this one. Another leather one. Um, ICDATC. It's a troop carrier, I guess is the gist of it. And I don't know all the names again. I've got price guides and books on military items because, again, you can't tell and you won't find a lot of these online. So I always keep books. Um, when I find them on military patches or listing squadrons or, or core badges and things like that. So it's a good thing for stuff like that. You can find a lot of them online by doing a Google search. So anyway, 660 on this one. Again, these are all legit prices. You can see there's 28 bidders, 30 bidders, 20 bidders, 15 bidders. They all have a ton of bidders, so they're all good items here. Um, this one looks like it's another, yeah, this is felt. So felt, bullion, and leather are key things that you look for. And that goes with Boy Scouts or any of the other ones too. So, And I'll probably cover Boy Scout items here and uh, within this week or so. I do have some craft items videos that I'm going to show you how to make a Christmas ornament. So you're ready for it. I know this seems like a crazy time to do it. Once you know what to look for, you can be buying items to make these out of throughout the year. So come summer, you'll be able to make some of these items if that's what you're interested in. But anyway, 635 on this one here. Another leather one. Now this one I've seen. This one's known. It's in a book. Uh, it's very popular. This is one of the popular ones that I see. $618. He did the black light test on it as well too. So that's key on some of these. So anyway, let's move on to the next one. Flying Tigers, um, any of the Flying Tiger stuff goes. There's leather versions, there's felt versions, there's bullion versions. This is a rather unique one here. Uh, it looks like it's put together from some leather pipe. Yeah, this one is a leather one here, actually, it looks like. Let's look at the back one more time. Yeah, this one is a leather one. So this gives you an example of how they're stitched together um, and what to look for in these. So all these were handmade back then for the most part. This one went for $2,399. I had some Flying Tiger photos, and just photos of these can go for a 1000 or better dollars, depending on what you have. So anyway, here's a Vietnam War era one, Air Con, Air Recon, the Raiders. Very rare patch. It's very generic looking. Um, could have been field made, made over there by, you know, one of the bases or something like that. These show up, but very, very infrequently. Sometimes these uh, Vietnam ones go for far more because there's more people around that would remember this and collect them um, than some of the World War II items, believe it or not. This one went for $1,700 plus. $1,753, mind you. Airborne ones, uh, 101st Airborne. This would have been... Um, uh, the, those who took place on, you know, D-Day and things along that line. These patches go for a ton of money every time I see them, as long as they're original. There's so much to these. There's new ones, so I don't know the difference on most of these. If they're dirt cheap, I'll take a shot at them. Um, if I can tell for sure, like the backs look like the earlier ones and I can look up and have some verifiable evidence, I'll spend the money on them. On this one here, you got to be very careful because they use the same patch for like 50 years. It was used World War II all the way into the Vietnam era and even past. So you got to be careful on this. This one went for right around $1,500. Now, here is a shoulder sleeve title. It would have went on the top of your sleeve up here. There might have been another patch underneath it. This is a field-made one. This one says uh, bullion Chinese-made. I don't know how they would tell Chinese-made or not. Maybe the fabric or the material or how it's done. I don't really know on all that aspects of it. I would have... Uh, pretty much bought it because it's, you know, it's it's the bullion wise. This is the same thing. This is a, um, a shoulder strip, a title strip on this one too. It could have been someone from the Italian um, uh, uh, theater of operation or something along that line. So anyway, $1,479. This is something most people would miss. Who would know that this little strip right here is worth that much? You know, that's just the way it is. Now here's a really interesting one here, 1420 I would have known it was, you know, a vintage patch. I don't know value on a lot of these. You're just going to have to price it or take a shot on some of these. But again, it's worth it. I make a ton of money on patches. Once you get the gist on being able to tell vintage from, you know, new or reproduction, you're good as gold on finding stuff like this. And I can find these all over the place. Even at thrift stores, you can run into a jacket or something where the patches were some money. You can see these at antiques, antique malls where the person selling them hasn't a clue. Um, in fact, if you look right up here, I have a video um, right now. I'll put the link to it of an antique haul that we did. And I'll show you inside the antique mall and see what we look for and stuff. But anyway, I find this kind of stuff almost weekly. I can find a patch. 
So, you know, there's some money to be had in it. They're not all worth a ton of money. Average patch is 20 to say 50 bucks on average for a decent patch. Uh, here's just another one, 933. The larger, the better. This is typically, you know, a five inch patch or so. So this is what you want to look for. These big ones here, they go on the big outside of a jacket. Those are what I see. This is a parachute field artillery battalion. Basically the whole battalion would parachute in with field artillery that was actually uh, parachuted in as well too. So some of the, it depends on what they did as to the value on some of these. So Here's another felt one, uh, airborne wool EMB patch of 10 called officer's pattern. Now, again, I don't know what all that, that stands for. I just know if it's a good patch, I throw it out as an auction. I always do auctions on patches, pretty much always, unless it's like a common one, like something like this, something like this, these early felt ones here, I'll just throw out 20 or something bucks on it. So anyway, but all these scarce ones, the big ones like this one here are going to go up in, a, in an auction. I'll get more money for them that way. Very few things are worth selling in an auction today, but scarce items like that are. Here's another one. This is a bullion, literally metal sleeve um, or metal uh, stitching on it. It literally has metal across the whole thing on a uh, like a field of stitched fabric. So these are key ones here. This is an early one. I would know without a doubt that this is an early one. Um, theater made again. That's the key to this one. 850. Uh, next one here is another squadron patch. They've kind of blurred the words together, but it's Italian made is what they're saying. Um, chain stitch, that's the style of pattern as you see. It's not filling in, it's just a bunch of chains that are stitched to fill it in back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. That would have been done on a machine by hand, of course. You can tell, I mean, it's going to have, you know, some dirt and some grime possibly too. It might have some issues with the back. That's typical on these. This guy knows what he has. 845 bucks, 21 bids. Um, okay, the next one here, third contingency OG. Um, now I, again, I don't know what these all are, but I know these titles, these bullion titles always sell. And they're really small, usually on felt, um, sometimes not. Sometimes you'll even find leather ones, but I always look for the bullion ones on anything. A bullion one will sell better than any other patch um, that's just stitched. The bullion are the ones that I always look for, or the oddball ones, field made, things like that too. So anyway, 817 bucks on this one. Another real nice one here. Now, this one I might have kept if I had it. Um, 34th Bomb Squadron. Again, it has the, the stitched canvas-like um, cheesecloth fabric almost on the back. And that's what I look for on some of these earlier ones here. The Doolittle Raiders. Now, they, they raided um, Tokyo, if I'm not mistaken. There's sheet music. There's um, books on it. There's movies on it. There's stills. All kinds of stuff. They made a movie on, I think, maybe 30 Seconds to Tokyo. Maybe that was the Doolittle movie, if I'm not mistaken. $745 on this one. 21 bids. These go on forever. You'll find thousands of patches on eBay that sold for a ton of money. Here's a really interesting one. I really liked this one here. It's a like a painted canvas, it almost looks like to me. Um... It's definitely not, not leather, obviously, but it's a very interesting one either way. Nighthawks, Marine Corps patch, World War II, a thousand bucks. They did a buy it now. Some of these, who knows what they would have went for. So it's iffy on some of them. If you know your patches, you can afford to do this. I don't know them enough to do it. So anyway, now again, here's one similar to this one here. Um, it's just a different version of it. So you'll find different versions of each patch possibly. But this one here is an early one. You can tell by it being hand-painted on there. Um, the stitching, it's literally a nice early piece here. They added a backing to it as well. 710 bucks. This is a World War I. You can tell by how crude they are on some of these. Here's another one. Next one, Jolly Roger. Um, this one's got like um, a coating on the back of it, it looks like. Theater made, it says again, 650 bucks. Now there's a couple of versions. I've seen a red um, background for it as well, too, with some different color patterns. So I'm not sure if that's an age just, uh, factor or not, but you'll see some of the patches have changed throughout the years. So you can tell a, a World War I versus a World War II versus a Vietnam by how the patch is made, the coloring and the style and things like that, too. So... Now, if you need a book on these, you can get them from the library. There's books on the military collectibles like this. There's a patch book out there as well, too. Here's another tank destroyer one, similar. Um, and again, they do black light on this one here, 650 bucks. Um, I'm assuming, I'm assuming they're showing who it belonged to, maybe, but there's no way to tell in my book. Uh, either way, it's a nice looking patch. 
Uh, this one here has felt. It has cheesecloth backing on it. Now, that backing was essential because that's what helped hold the stitching on to this because felt does pull apart easily without something on it to reinforce it. So, But anyway, that's what I have for you here. Hopefully, you can see the drastic value of things like this. I do source these items at antique malls. Thrift stores occasionally, you'll find something there. Um, flea markets, estate sales, auctions, even garage sales occasionally run into these. And again, it doesn't have to be World War II. Vietnam stuff shows up at garage sales, believe it or not, quite often. I'll find uniforms, just junk pieces that people think aren't worth money. And again, that's where I make some more money at. So, But that's just places that I can find this type of item. Well, there you go. There's another item that I look for. Hopefully that gave you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified when I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.